Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. My name is Olumu Iwa Matuloko. How's we been? Last week was a very busy one for the top management of the Federal Revenue Service and of course for us. We began the week in Minanaja State and ended it in Lagos. On Tuesday the 20th of August, Mina played host to the Group Regional Operational Meeting of the Field Operations Group of the FRS in the North Central Region. The operational meeting is typically an internal affair and it brings together tax men and women on the field from various parts of the country hosted by their colleagues in the hosting region. The operational meeting that was held in Mina was no different and for that kind of meeting you would expect operational issues to come up. We are not disappointed and so in this segment of our offering today on tax matters we will be sharing with you what transpired at the operational meeting in Mina. It all began with the coordinating director of the field operations group, Mr. S.S. Ogumbeson, announcing to the delight of all the superlative performance of the FRS in the period January to July 2012. We are gathered here in MENA to re-examine and re-evaluate all that we have done in the last seven months, chastise ourselves where we need to do such, commend ourselves where we need to also commend. We've held meeting in Asaba this year, we held in Sokoto, and we were in Lagos. So this is the fourth meeting. I would like once again to comment on the revenue collection performance as at the end of July 2012. Our achievement indicates that we have recorded about, on the whole, if you take 98% for oil and gas, and you take 103 of non-oil, you take the average, you'll be recording about 94%. In the month of June 2012 alone, the Federal Inland Revenue Service collected a whopping sum of 269 billion naira. This is not unexpected. The reason why we recorded that high level of performance in the month of June is the fact that one company alone paid 180 billion naira. And the reason why that payment was made, the fact that the officers in Lagos are on top of the function on self-assessment. They communicated to the company that this is self-assessment tax regime. You must file on or before the due date. Following from this, the coordinating director gave matching orders to his men and women. From January 2013, we will not tolerate any offices not fully implementing the self-assessment tax regime. This does not take away from companies that are wishing to enjoy instrumental payments. But what we are saying is, if your accounting date is June, by December of that year, you are expected to have paid and filed your returns. The principle of self-assessment is that your returns and the full payment must be made not later than the due date. If you have an accounting date of December, the law allows the companies to hold on for six months and that not later than June of the succeeding year you must have filed your return and made all payments. But the practice today is that even for those whose accounting dates are December, by June of the succeeding year, that's when they will be writing to you to grant them instrumental payment concession. But we say now, even though you're going to give me your return by that June, full payments must have been realized by the FRS at that same time. Okay. Does that take away instrumental payments? No. Between January and June of that year, you are still at liberty to make sure that you make your installment. Self-assessment. Self-assessment. That is all you hear about these days. Power in the hands of the taxpayer. Review your business operations. Determine your profit or loss. Determine your tax liability and pay. It's as simple as ABC. And it is paying off. 
Imagine one single company paying 180 billion naira in taxes, and that is just a percentage of profit. Company's income tax in Nigeria is 30 percent of profit after all allowable expenses, after all capital computations. And by the way, that company is a telecoms company. We won't tell you who. As we said earlier, the operational meeting is typically an internal affair. And so, reports on operational matters were presented and discussed at length. But we cannot wrap up this segment without sharing this with you. I received a, a message today from uh, concerned Nigerians on the oil revenue that the federal government uh, normally you know, disclose to Nigerians. And they are saying they did a calculation of the production of oil per day multiplied by the rate at which the oil prices is uh, sold at the international market and they came up with a, a figure of about 103 trillion naira. But you know, they said the budget of the federal government for the current year is about four point something trillion naira. So they are now asking Nigerians to ask government, you know, the explanation for the difference between 100 and 3 trillion naira and the 4.7 trillion naira that is in our budget. Somebody sent that similar text to me. And that person sent it to me in my capacity as a revenue worker and wanted my opinion. And I replied the person, this is turnover. From turnover, we will deduct production cost. Then we will get the profit. From the profit, government will take its own share as taxes. If the people that supply these figures cannot give us these other figures, then I can talk. But from what government is taking from oil, from where I work, I believe we've taken a reasonable share of taxes, subject to tax audits. I want to say that um, we must understand how this thing works. In the first place, all the crude oil produced in Nigeria does not belong to Nigeria. This crude oil is either produced by joint venture or in production sharing contracts. For the one produced by joint venture, the companies in joint ventures has close to about 40% of the amount produced. Federal government has maybe in some cases 55 and 60. That's that. So you must understand that the crude produced by joint venture will be taken or shared between the company and the federal government. As for the one produced by the production sharing contract, it is also shared between the companies and the federal government. In fact, in this case, and which is even the larger production now, you discover that the cost oil, which is the cost of production, because government did not really put anything into it, is a lot. So the cost oil alone is so much, and it actually goes to the companies. It is only the royalty oil, the tax oil, and the profit oil which after you have taken cost that will go to government. So if you are looking at 2.7 million barrels, what will actually come to government after you have taken the shares that belong to uh, the various parties will, not, will no longer be 2.7. Not all the crude produced in Nigeria belongs to government, particularly those produced by the production sharing companies. I think this is my preliminary comment for now. I think in addition to my colleague's uh, uh, preliminary explanation, um, our production volume uh, for a very long time has never in any way uh, gotten nearer 2.7. Um, you are aware of the restiveness in the Niger Delta. 
in the in a very for a very long time our production volume has hovered around 1.5 and 1.8 million barrels per day so it will be totally wrong and entirely wrong for anybody to state our production volume for whatever reason at 2.7 million barrels a day it's only until recently that uh, the um, militants repent repented militants uh, entered into arrangement with government and they are manning the oil pipelines that we are even beginning to achieve anything very close to 2.5 and that and thereabout so that is also a, a factor so if you take uh, 2.7 away from say about 1.6 1.7 is a very wide margin thank you another thing we should note is that government is no longer funding petroleum operations it's being funded by the operators and therefore the operators take the larger share at the initial stage very high amount go, goes to the operators so here in the in terms of cost oil 100% of cost invested is equipped by these companies and then they share profit after that and then they share tax and if you ask me the tax element of all these operations as we have it as our target is just three trillion naira they are even using just one constant figure the figure has or they say 100 and something when price of oil was 89 nobody talks about it when it was less than 80 nobody talks about it some that ended up not even exported out of the country they're not talking about all those so we are going to invite them to come and talk to us the authors of that email or text message the concerned nigerians will be invited to a meeting we commend the sense of public responsibility of the federal revenue service setting the record straight there if you like or better put rising to the occasion those guys at the FRS sure know their jobs. Of course, we know that a lot of pilfering, bunkering, call it what you like, is going on in that sector. But those matters belong to some other organizations or some other persons, not the taxman, not the taxwoman, not the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Their own is to collect taxes. There were other matters. For example, the case of companies that continually, perennially, claim not to have commenced business after registration, who end up in the new company register of the FRS. The FRS calls it NCR, New Companies Register. These NCR companies, some of them are later discovered to have suffered withholding tax deductions from some principals, which indicates that they are indeed doing business. It will constitute a offense for any tax controller to issue TCC to NCR without first checking the web portal. This is one of the takeaway for us at this meeting. Most of the companies that come to you and say they are NCR, you just give them because you are seeing the memo and certificate. You are not testing the names first against our tax, uh, uh, tax database. Dedicate a particular office for that function. Before an NCR gets tax clearance certificate, refer it to that desk first. No more hiding place for tax dodgers. Shift now. Uh, sorry, madam. I know the for my name. I don't check in no day. After all my wahala, these people still no register me. How about I put on 14? Tingini. Waiting consenting to matter for inside this matter, where would they talk now? Ever. Explain for a 14. Madam, taxpayers' identification number, T, a special number for all correct taxpayers. It they compulsory. If you want to register and do business with government, without T, you're not going to do business. I beg. Now, how much I go pay to collect this thing? Madam, I get a 14 free. Madam, take your certificate of incorporation to FIROS office, fill the form, and you go get a one time. Just like that. Mm. I beg, make her go, make her go collect my own. You are, you are. Tea now free, oh. Now for everybody, now your correct identity. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. Welcome back. 
the program is still Tax Matters, and we'll move on to the Lagos end of our week-long journey. On Friday, the 31st day of August 2012, the Federal Inland Revenue Service stepped forward once again to be recognized for its meritorious service to Nigeria. It was at the Taxpayers Forum of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund at which taxpayers who have been loyal and consistent in paying the 2% education tax over the years were honored. For the Federal Inland Revenue Service, its honor was earned through its efforts in collecting education tax fund since collection commenced in 1994. The occasion was graced by the Honorable Federal Minister of Education, Professor Rukaya Trufai, the Executive Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Alaji Kabiru Mashi, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Third Fund, Dr. Musa Babayo, and the Executive Secretary of Third Fund, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund, formerly known as Education Trust Fund, was established pursuant to the Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993, which was later amended by Act No. 40 of 1998, which has now been repealed and replaced by the Tertiary Education Trust Act of 2011. The main source of income to the fund is the 2% recurring tax paid from the accessible profit of companies registered in Nigeria. This is where the Federal Inland Revenue Service comes in. The FRS assesses and collects education tax on behalf of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund. And over the years, the FRS has done a good job of it, as revealed here at the event by Alaji Kabiru Mashi, acting executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Just like yesterday, we started this partnership in 1993 with the establishment of the Education Trust Fund through the Education Act number no. 7 of 1993, which empowered Federal Revenue Service to collect 2% of accessible profits of companies operating in the country toward the improvement of the quality of education and for the delivery of competent and forward-looking intervention programs at all levels of the education system in Nigeria. And in almost two decades down the line, I feel compelled personally, and the board and management of the Federal Law Revenue Service feel very proud to be associated with this laudable initiative. In the first year of assessment, as earlier I mentioned in 1995, the actual collection was 1.96 billion naira, which gradually rose to over 131 billion naira last year. He have decided to honor us at the service with this award. On behalf of the board and manager of the service, I'd like to thank your organization for the award. Alhaji Mashi's account was corroborated by the chairman of the board of trustees of the Third Fund, the executive secretary, and the honorable federal minister of education. With a view to achieving enhanced delivery of service in the most efficient and effective manner, the internal reforms which you have successfully managed within the fund and the commitment, drive, and leadership of the Federal Labor Revenue Service management and staff, our tax collection, which is the main source of funding of our projects, has geometrically increased from 10.4 billion for the period 1994 to 98 to 139 billion in 2010, an increase of over 1,000 percent. We thank the Federal Revenue Service for this significant contribution to cause of national development. It is only appropriate to raise and answer three questions. Basically three questions. First, how much has education tax generated since the beginning of the education tax collection in 1994? Two, what use have the funds generated, collected, been applied to? And number three, what impact have we achieved? The first question is straightforward. Thanks to the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the taxpayers, the sum of 
billion naira has been realized in education tax over the last 18 years, 1994 to the year 2012, 591.6 billion naira. Most interestingly, 70% of this amount was collected in the last four years, thanks again to the proactive role of the Federal Illa Revenue Service and improvement in other sectors of the economy outside oil and gas. Although the oil and gas sector remains dominant, accounting for 60% of total education tax collection last year, yet the percentage of non-oil tax receipts, particularly from manufacturing and the service sectors, has increased in the last couple of years as compared to the period prior to the year 2008. At the beginning of the intervention in 1999, the collection started in 1993, but the disbursement started in 1999. So at the beginning of the intervention in 1999, there were 37 public universities. Today, there are 74 public universities, in addition to 56 polytechnics and 65 colleges of education, making a total of 195 public tertiary institutions and the number is rising. Certainly, the requirements of three universities, Ibadan, the Ahmad Bello University's area, the University of Nigeria and Suka, alone are enough to overwhelm the lean resources of an intervention agency. But these are only three universities out of 74, plus the polytechnics and colleges that I mentioned. May I also express the appreciation of the entire sector to the Federal Era Revenue Service for the maximum support you have always extended to TED Fund. We shall continue to work with you at the headquarters in Abuja and through your large, medium and integrated tax offices nationwide to increase the collection in order to provide improved access to qualitative education in Nigeria. We also commend you for your effort in the last four years. Congratulations. And for this superlative performance, the FRS was honored. The Executive Secretary of TED Fund, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, and the Honorable Federal Minister of Education took turns in presenting the scorecard of TED Fund over the years. For their consistency in paying the education tax over the years, several companies were honored at the event. I would like to express the federal government's profound appreciation to all the taxpayers. I want to assure you that we shall make this forum regular so that we can be briefing you from time to time on trends in education tax collection and its effective utilization. On this note, I wish for all of us to have a standing audition for our taxpayers for some few seconds. Standard audition for the taxpayers. We are highly appreciative. The Nigerian education sector is indeed very, very grateful. The 2012 Third Fund Taxpayers Forum was attended by officials of sister organizations from Tanzania, Ghana, and Sierra Leone who are understudying the Nigerian model. In Ghana, they have a value added tax of 15%, 2.5% for education tax, and 2.5% for national health insurance. We have to call it a day on this episode of Tax Matters because for today, our time is up. We trust that you will join us next week on the same station, same day of the week, same time of the day for a fresh episode of Tax Matters. Pay your taxes as and when you, keep your noses dry, and don't do what I won't do. Have a good week ahead. <music>